First you see the birds, gulls and terns wheeling overhead, then swooping down to a wide expanse of water, dimpled as though by large raindrops and glittering with silver streaks. More and more birds materialize as if from nowhere, and the air rings with their shrill screams. Boats, too, begin to converge on the scene. The boiling cloud of birds has told anglers everywhere within view that a school of men ate perhaps numbering in the tens of thousands, is being ravaged by a school of bluefish. Many of us have never even heard of them, and even experienced fishermen sometimes refer to them as junkfish. They have survived centuries of relentless predation, but the end may be finally in sight for America's once vast stocks of Menhaden, and the ecological consequences of that could be disastrous. Menhaden are oily, bony, foul-smelling fish that most of us would never think of eating. But the quantity of menhaden caught in U.S. water each year exceeds that of all other species of fish combined. The author of the book, From Island Press, says that menhaden may also be the most important fish in the sea. This fish, unlike any other fish, has two crucial roles in the environment. The first, says author Bruce Franklin, they are an essential food for many other species. It is the food that all the predators on our coast depend upon. Their second function is to consume vast quantities of algae. For many aquatic animals, algae is either toxic or indigestible, but menhaden thrive on it. Even though the adult fish is only about 12 inches long, uh, each fish filters four gallons of water a minute. Filter feeding by immense schools of Menhaden once helped clarify vast stretches of America's Atlantic and Gulf coasts. Clearer water allows sunlight to penetrate more deeply into the marine environment, thus encouraging the growth of aquatic plants which produce oxygen and provide shelter to hosts of other fish and shellfish. But today, the Menhaden fishery is nearing collapse. And I came here because I thought the fishing would be good. And one of the first things I did was join a fishing club. And I found out things weren't as good as I thought they were. Uh, talked to a lot of people about why, and nobody really had good answer except saying, you know, the fish just don't come here anymore. We are destroying this fish for the benefit of one small company that is taking this keystone of the entire marine ecology of both coasts and grinding up that keystone and turning it into industrial commodities that we don't really need. The only threat to the Menhaden is the Menhaden reduction industry, which means one company. Each year, several hundred thousand tons of Menhaden are converted by the firm Omega Protein into industrial commodities. Their bodies are pressed out for use in cosmetics, linoleum, health food supplements, lubricants, margarine, soap, insecticide, and paints. Their dried out carcasses are then pulverized, scooped into huge piles, containerized, and shipped out as feed for domestic cats and dogs, farmed fish, and most of all, poultry and pigs. The scale of this enterprise is enormous and unsustainable. Today, industrial fishing techniques enable a single net to harvest tens of thousands of menhaden at a throw. A single firm captures billions of menhaden every year. A single factory complex can process hundreds of millions of them. Menhaden have always been an integral, if unheralded, part of America's history. Native Americans once taught the pilgrims to plant the menhaden alongside each seed of corn. Later, following the Industrial Revolution, oil produced from menhaden literally greased the wheels of America's manufacturing plants. In fact, from the mid-19th century right through to the end of the 20th, Menhaden have always been the nation's largest fishery. But today, action is required to save this vital resource. What's necessary is for the federal government to act. There are two ways we can go on that. One is to get legislation from Congress, uh, and the other is to know what to put a stop to it or put a moratorium on it. Franklin says private citizens, especially recreational fishermen, have an important role to play as well. There are 12 million saltwater recreational fishing people. And as a group, saltwater recreational fishing people are the frontline stewards of our marine environment. And they are a potential extremely powerful 
political force. A lot of people have asked me, how on earth did I get involved in menhaden? And as an everyday fisherman who goes out here in the chop tank or out on the bay to fish, there are days I can't find a fish. Now the Chesapeake is dying. You've got a vast, vast dead zone. Uh, the striped bass uh, in the Chesapeake are starving. They, they simply don't have the menhaden that they need to eat. And omega protein has, has done that. Most important of all, he says, is public awareness and public involvement. There is currently no limit on the Manhattan industry's catch of Manhattan in U.S. federal waters. The fishery is not required to meet the mandates of U.S. federal fisheries laws. Although 13 of the 15 East Coast states have outlawed the Manhattan reduction fishery, Virginia, North Carolina, and all the Gulf states except Florida allow it. Franklin urges us to act. Well, the, the main obstacle to saving the Menhaden is simply ignorance, that people aren't aware of the existence of this fish and, and its importance in the sea. If people were aware, uh, we would uh, stop this industry. Northern New England was once home to the largest Menhaden fishery on Earth, with schools of the fish sometimes stretching for 40 miles or more. No significant school of adult Menhaden were seen north of Cape Cod from 1993 through 2004. Today, most of the Menhaden come from the Gulf of Mexico, not the Atlantic. Since 2007, with the publication of The Most Important Fish in the Sea, the outreach efforts by Bruce Franklin and others have produced significant results in our effort to protect the Menhaden. The Texas Fish and Wildlife Commission passed the first catch limit on Menhaden in state waters. The bill H.R. 3841, introduced in Congress by Congressman Wayne Gilchrist of Maryland, sought a ban on the commercial fishing of Menhaden. Representative Jim Saxton of New Jersey's bill H.R. 3840 proposed a partial moratorium on the Atlantic reduction fishery for Menhaden. In January 2010, two Virginia state senators, Ralph Northam of Norfolk and John Cosgrove of Chesapeake, introduced bills 185 and 294 in the Senate and House respectively to implement oversight of the Menhaden fishery in Virginia. To learn more about what you can do, please check Island Press's website at www.islandpress.org.